Hey folks, Johnny with Tennessee Mountain Bees. It's June 26, and we got mimosa tree in full bloom here. I thought it's time to me and Riley get back out in the field and share another tree species with you. So stick around, we're gonna talk about it. Okay, we got a we got a nice mimosa tree here blooming on the edge of the field. And it's a little early in the morning, it's just a little past 8:30, but I'm already seeing just a few bees on these blooms. I uh, saw a hummingbird and some butterflies. These, uh, these trees are real interesting. They're not native to the United States. Uh, they're also called silk tree or Persian silk tree. They're native to China, Korea, and Iran. Uh, you can see the, uh, it's, it's real easy to tell this time of year when they're in bloom. It almost looks like something out of a Dr. Seuss book to me. They have a, a really, really good smell. And uh, it's not a significant source for us. There were a lot more of these trees around these parts when I was a kid. Uh, a lot of folks plant them as ornamentals and they've kind of fell out of favor for, for one reason or other. But you still see a lot of them. They're naturalized now. And you'll see them growing on the edge of the woods along highways and stuff. They, uh, they can handle full sun. They really do well in full sun and have a lot more blooms. But these, uh, these leaves are bipinnately compound. Each pinnae has several little tiny leaflets, which are about the size of the grain of rice. And so even when these trees aren't blooming, it's, it's real easy to identify them. The bark is really smooth looking. As a tree gets older, it has vertical lines on it. And uh, generally you'll see multiple main branches on these and they're real easy to climb, a favorite climbing tree for kids. Although I remember getting pack saddles, uh, caterpillar stung multiple times climbing these trees. There's a, there's a female hummingbird visiting the blooms now. But uh, real interesting how these trees became naturalized in the United States. They, uh, they can thrive in zones six through 10. But if y'all hang around a little while, we'll talk a little bit more about these trees. And I also wanted to share, share this bloom with you here that, uh, that fell on the ground. Give you a close-up look. Really neat little blooms. If anybody out there has any uh, specific experience with what the uh, honey from this source would taste like, if if it's a significant source enough for you, uh, please let us know. Yeah, she's checking out several blooms. All right, I see another example across the field here. We'll go take a look at it. Y'all stay tuned. What are you seeing, Riley? Smelling anything good? Yeah, I cut this field just a few days ago and noticed this tree in bloom, and that's why I decided to uh, let me get some footage of it. I don't, know if you can, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a really nice one blooming right over there. Let's see if I can zoom in. We'll, we'll run over there and take a look at it. Okay, here we got a better example. This one has had a lot more sunshine. As you can see, not seeing as many things working this one as I did the small one, though. Yeah, these will uh, generally uh, get to maybe about 35 feet. A lot of these blooms look like they're beginning to dry up. Yeah, okay, if y'all hang around a little while, we'll take a look at a few, few more pictures and talk a little bit more about this amazing species. Hey folks, thanks for hanging around. Back at the computer now, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the mimosa tree. The Latin name is Albizia julibrisum. It has several common names, silk tree, Persian silk tree, pink silk tree, and sometimes you'll hear it even called Formosa. It's not native to the U.S. As I mentioned earlier, it uh, was brought over from France in 1785 by a fellow by the name of Andre. Uh, not sure about his last name pronunciation. It's spelled M-I-C-H-A-U-X. 
he lived in North Charleston, South Carolina from 1786 to 1796, where he had a 111 acre botanical garden. And he was the uh, botanist to Louis the 16th of France. And uh, while he was here, uh, he brought over several species, including the camella, the crepe myrtle, mimosa, the parasol tree, and the sweet olive, and also ginkgo and tea plants to the area. The leaves are very easily recognizable. They have these tiny little leaflets that are really small, about the size of a grain of rice, and it's on a bipinnately compound leaf. The bark, when it's young, is really smooth, as you see here in this picture on the left. And then as it ages, you'll, you'll see the uh, ridges, the vertical ridges showing up. Blooms are very showy, have a really interesting smell not overpowering with a floral smell, uh, uh, really, really nice and interesting. They prefer full sun. They'll have a lot more blooms if they have the opportunity to grow in full sun. They were a lot more commonly uh, seen around these parts when I was younger as ornamentals. They seem to have fallen out of favor uh, for various reasons, I guess. Uh, maybe not the least of which is a, is a fungus. Uh, I believe it's called Fusillium wilt something like that, that they may get. It's in the, they're in the lagoon family and they do fix nitrogen. Uh, you can see the seed pods here. And this may be one of the reasons why you don't see a lot of them as ornamentals anymore because they, they're not very aesthetically pleasing in the winter time. You can see all these uh, seed pods here. They're considered in, invasive and they may be in the, uh, in more southern areas, but around here they don't seem to be invasive at all. They don't seem to outcompete most other species. You'll see a few of them dotted around along roadsides. I've always said that a, one man's weed is another man's flower, so I think we're lucky to have these mimosa trees dotted around as an extra uh, pollen and nectar source for our bees and other pollinators. If you want to grow some of these, you can collect uh, these seeds whenever the uh, seed pods start uh, twisting and popping open. And you can uh, uh, soak them in water. Uh, if you'll put them in hot water initially and then, and, then, and then let them stay in there for a few hours, preferably overnight. And then you can uh, plant those about twice as deep as they are wide. If you'll keep the growing medium uh, moist but not too wet, they should sprout in 10 days to two weeks. You can see on the range map here, they they've become naturalized and they grow really well in, in zones six through 10. They're very drought tolerant. And that's one of the advantages of, of the species. I always like to look at honeybee net to, uh, to check out the different sources. I was, uh, I was amazed when I went into to my region, the Appalachian Ozark Upland region, to, to find that mimosa wasn't listed. And I, I didn't even find it listed as a minor source even in the uh, region to the south of me here. And But uh, but I, I did recall a video that Bob Benny did a couple of years ago about the mimosa tree. And even though it's a minor source, it can be a good source in some areas. He said it could add as much as 15 pounds to a colony uh, if, if they had enough availability. The honey tastes really good, he said, and it's uh, similar to tulip poplar in that it's dark, but it does have an orange tint, which I found really interesting. And he said they have they really try hard to keep that out of their sourwood honey because of that orange coloration. When you look at the different possible herbal remedies, you'll find a lot of information on mimosa. And uh, I found this mimosa elixir online. And uh, you'll, you know, when you read, I've, I've never tried this, uh, but it's supposed to be a great mood stabilizer. It's uh, uh, supposedly good for wound healing and antioxidant and it has anti-aging compounds. It's been called the tree of happiness. And this worker bee sure looks happy here inside this bloom. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, a little bit more about the mimosa tree. I enjoyed reading up on this and, and finding out, you know, when they, you know, when they made it over here to the U.S. and how. And I wanted to share some of that with you. And I uh, so much appreciate you watching my videos. Please subscribe and hit that like button if, if 
you found this interesting and helpful at all. And uh, may God bless you, your family, and your bees. And we'll see you next time.